All right, well, I kind of feel like an aerobics teacher here, so I think I'm going to start with a quick little stretch to get us through the end of this evening. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to ask how many people here have had bad personal experiences with sport. So remember when you were in high school and you were that last person picked on the team? Or when some jocks made fun of you for throwing the ball funny? Or where are the women here who pretended to have their period just so that they could get out of a particularly gruesome class? Or anyone who's ever had one of those Evo coach types who yelled at you and made you feel so miserable that you wished you would never have to get out on the field again? Can anybody relate to this? Yeah, okay, I see a few people here and there. Well, I certainly can. Growing up in Brazil, I was one of those small girls who always got picked last for being, too, for being too small. And when I moved to Canada, I had a very sadistic PE teacher who thought it was a good idea for boys and girls to play rugby together. Yeah, not a good idea. So I did make it into the volleyball team, but unfortunately, I was outgrown by the um, other girls, and so I had to go through one of the worst of the sports dramas, which is getting cut off in the tryouts. So, as you can imagine, my idea of sport was pretty biased. It wasn't until I started working for an organization in Brazil that developed educational sports projects for kids that this bias would change completely. I learned that sport is not only about performance, that depending on how you practice it, it can actually make you a better human being. Because through sport, we learn to win, but we also learn to cope with defeat. We learn to score individually, but also to celebrate collectively. And we learn to respect ourselves, and our opponents. So the organization's name is Instituto Compartilhar. It was uh, founded by the coach of the Brazilian men's, national, Brazilian men's uh, volleyball team, a guy with a great record of world and Olympic victories, and one of the people responsible for making volleyball the second biggest sport in Brazil after football. The name of the organization actually means to share, which is inspired in the coach's idea to share with society all the success that he had obtained through sport. So, why educational sport? Well, I'll start by saying that by itself, sport is not educational. It's the way in which it's applied that actually makes a difference. So to use sport as an educational tool, first we have to look at the individual as a unit that expresses itself through uh, physical, emotional, cognitive, and social means. And when we're talking about children and youth, the idea is to provide these kids with real experiences that they can incorporate into their own development process. So how do we do that? Well, we begin with some inherent aspects of sports practice that can be strengthened. Sport is a structured activity with established rules. And when we're talking about collective sports, uh, the interaction between individuals within that predetermined setting gives kids real and complex experiences of human interaction. So without even trying too hard, we're already working a really important aspect of human development, which is socialization. And then there are other values that we can um, enhanced through specific actions uh, within the practice. So with volleyball, it's really interesting because it's the kind of sport that you simply can't play alone. Because you have three touches of the ball on each side, you literally depend on your teammates to be able to make a play. So in that sense, we can really work values like cooperation, responsibility, and respect. In our case, in the 90s, we started offering um, volleyball initiation programs for kids with a focus mostly on motor development and game skills. The methodology we use is called mini volleyball. Um, basically, it redimensions the spaces and the equipments of the game according to kids' uh, motor development and physical abilities. So, in that, so the court is smaller, the ball is lighter, the net is lower, and the rules of the game are adapted into four progressive stages until you finally reach the official volleyball game. The idea is that um, we, we stimulate more positive and correct movements, and so we keep the kids motivated to want to continue on learning. Basically, if the kids feel that they're playing the game, they'll definitely keep coming back next class. Um, this constant contact with the ball and participatory classes make it really attractive for the kids, as you can see by this statement, because if we let them, they really would just come in every single day to come play with us. So we had this game aspect really nicely figured out, but as our projects developed, we felt the need to go deeper. We started noticing that the kids weren't coming to the projects only to learn volleyball but also because they made new friends, they socialized, and they filled their free time with a safe and useful activity. So we figured that it was possible to um, build on the values already present in volleyball without actually losing focus on the sport per se. And in, in within, from that perspective, we developed, we defined uh, a couple of different core values, such as the ones that I mentioned before, to be worked in each of the four uh, stages of the methodology. So these are incorporated into all of our activities, such as um, the classes itself, and then tournaments, special events, and special activities. So for example, 
when you have kids uh, themselves set up and clean up, or collectively constructing a code of conduct for the classes, uh, or encouraging kids to take on leadership roles in refereeing a game, or leading an exercise, or organizing events where the kids themselves define the activities and execute them. These are all examples of how we can, um, how we can actually uh, give them experiences that they can assimilate uh, through actual experience. So today, the organization operates projects all over Brazil in public schools, and we reach almost 6,000 kids between the ages of 8 and 15. And in each one of these projects, these kids have the opportunity to experience volleyball and learn that besides moving their bodies, occupying their time, and having fun, they're actually learning things that will make them better equipped to deal with challenges in real life. So a good example of how these values can be applied in different environments happened in one of our projects in Rio de Janeiro, where we offer an after-school program for uh, kids from a very high-risk area. A lot of the times, these kids can't even make it to class because of the violence that they experience back in the, their communities. So when they first came into the project, their behavior completely reproduced the harsh realities where they were coming from. Because basically, when you're struggling to survive, simple things like passing a ball to a teammate, or lining up for an exercise, or overcoming a difficult move just aren't part of their realities. So when we first started, these kids were constantly fighting for the ball, they were catcalling each other all the time, and they were getting frustrated and giving up at the slightest challenge. And so through this focus on the methodology, on the values, we were able to slowly open their minds to the idea of first respecting each other, and then second and most importantly, of overcoming that fear of learning something new. So once they got a taste of volleyball, a taste of the game, we had them completely hooked. This um, statement was said to me by a mom who was actually a little worried about her laundry because her daughter had started using their clothesline um, to play volleyball and keep on practicing, using it as a net to keep on practicing after class every single day. So it gives you an idea of how involved um, the kids got with volleyball. So through this um, team building experience, we were able to create a new sense of identity within these kids. So from feeling excluded from society all the time, all of a sudden they belonged to a group that was growing together. And this development was taken one step further when, one of the, uh, when a few of the older kids in our project started realizing that their public school wasn't delivering the kind of education that, that met their new expectations. So they decided to, they started noticing the uh, frequent lack of teachers, the precarious conditions of their classrooms, and even the negative attitudes of their own classmates. They decided to take action in discussing these issues through the creation of a school newspaper that was completely put together and written by the students themselves. And it was the first step towards the mobilization of the school as a whole to uh, change and improve its conditions. So when I asked one of the school teachers what she felt compelled these kids to take on such an action, this is what she said. I see a difference in responsibility over things a determination to overcome challenges and to be part of a group that makes a difference. It's that feeling of being someone. And throughout my uh, field visits all over Brazil, I heard similar stories of kids being transformed by sport. Kids learning through their own means that sport in itself isn't the solution to their problems, but rather that what they experience in the court, in the game, um, things like self-respect, like critical thought, uh, tolerance and fair play, are all values that they can transfer to all other aspects of their lives. So there's this concept in the social sciences called the theory of human need that argues that effective participation in society requires two basic capacities, um, physical health and personal autonomy. From what I've been saying here, we can see that sport can effectively contribute to both these aspects because in terms of physical health, the sport is one way that you can keep a healthy body. And in terms of autonomy, in a volleyball game, we're constantly faced with really tough decisions and we have to be held accountable for these before our teammates. So in that sense, we create, a, we create an awareness of our place, of our individual place within a collective setting. So as I said before, the ball by itself cannot be seen as the agent of transformation. It certainly serves a motivational purpose, but the real change will come through the right methodology, a methodology with a strong focus on human development, inclusion, and empowerment. Because throwing a ball on the court is easy, but it's only when we take that sport experience further that kids will develop into conscious participants of society, and they'll be better prepared to deal with the biggest challenge of their lives, their futures. Thank you.